pointing away from herself, despite the honour that we rightly want to give her, and pointing towards her divine son, pointing towards his role and his saving work. Because the miracle we're given in this morning's Gospel is the first of Christ's miracles, carried out at the behest and, dare I say, the insistence of his mother. It begins and opens up Christ's ministry, a ministry of teaching and healing, which would culminate in his death and resurrection, also revealing of healing and teaching. Healing a wounded humanity through what he did on the cross, offering himself up for the sins of mankind, and teaching in the sense that it reveals to us something of the love of God in our lives, which will take a lifetime to understand. And this is fitting because this too is a place of healing and teaching. It was over 160 years ago that Our Lady revealed to Bernadette in a series of visions not just a spring which would become the healing waters through which many miracles have occurred, but another kind of healing, a spiritual healing, a healing of our souls as well as our bodies. Amongst the visions that Bernadette has, Our Lady asks her to pray for the conversion of sinners. And Bernadette doesn't know what this means, and she asks the beautiful lady who she describes. This beautiful lady smiles in warmth and kindness and gentleness, something which would radiate through Bernadette, and something we should look to, to try to radiate in our own lives. Each of us comes to this place in need of some kind of healing. We recognize our faults and our failings before Almighty God, and we ask through his grace to change and transform us in the same way as he transformed water into wine 2,000 years ago. The healing that some of us seek is easily observable, but all of us have a different kind of healing open to us. The spiritual healing which Mary spoke of when she asked Bernadette to pray for the conversion of the world. We come before this image of the Virgin Mary knowing where we stand before God, but also confident in the promises which he has made. We know our weaknesses, we know our faults, but we also know through the teaching, through his teaching, that the working of God's grace in our own lives is sufficient for that transformation that we so need. In pointing the servants at the wedding to her son, Our Lady was encouraging them to trust in what she wanted, in what he would do. To us today as well, Our Lady urges us only to trust in what Christ can and wants to do in our lives. For our hearts in these days, we only need to be open to what Christ wants to do, to reveal his love for us in a deeper way and in a clearer way, show us how to live as his followers. In transforming water into wine at the wedding feast, Christ took something very ordinary and changed it, and in doing so brought about a greater joy to those that he came into contact with that day, and probably sparing them a great deal of embarrassment. May we too be open to what Christ wants to say to us, to what Christ wants to do in us, and allow ourselves to be drawn deeper into his love, transform the world around us, and continue on our earthly journey towards eternal paradise, towards eternal happiness, where we too will drink that new wine in the heavenly kingdom. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.